Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we're gonna talk Korean sunscreens, but we're gonna pick it apart and look at the ongoing issues in the Korean sunscreen industry. I'll give you some updates on some recent developments with certain brands, but also sharing my thoughts and feelings and where it ultimately leaves us as consumers and whether we can continue to place our trust in the Korean sunscreen industry, manufacturers, testing, and of course, the regulatory environment around it. I'm gonna be answering some of the frequently asked questions which have risen in the last couple of days from you guys surrounding um, Korean sunscreen. So if you want to learn a little bit more as we pick it apart, keep on watching. This video comes on the back of a very difficult year for the Korean sunscreen industry where brand after brand, some of our cult favourites and some of the biggest skincare brands in Korea have fallen foul of independent testing which has shown that the claims they were making on their bottle weren't substantiated by the ingredients and the products that they were actually presenting to us. This means that a lot of us were using SPFs which actually didn't match what we thought they were when we made the purchase and has left a lot of doubt surrounding the whole industry. Before we get into this, and I've got a lot to cover so I want to keep this short, I do want to caveat it with a couple of things. First of all, we're talking in this video specifically about Korean sunscreens and the industry as a whole, but I don't just want this to be seen as a Korean issue because actually this is something that has happened in a number of territories, continents over a couple of years. We've had instances of um, brands failing independent testing over in America. In Europe, there was a widespread issue in the late 90s, early noughties around brands making claims that they then couldn't substantiate in independent testing. And whilst that's been ironed out largely now and the attention has moved on to Korea, this isn't something that other countries are immune to. So I just want to set that. I also know that a lot of people talk about Asian sunscreens as like a catch-all term. Actually, the regulatory environment, which we're going to come on to later on in the video, is wildly different in Korea than in, say, Japan. And I don't think I need to say that these are two entirely different countries. And so I think the term Asian sunscreens is a little bit misleading and one that I won't be using in this video. And I kind of encourage people not to use generally because these are two very different regulatory environments and very different products, approaches, brands, all of that. So I don't think that terminology is particularly helpful. Finally, I just want to say that whilst in the West we're all outraged by this, these Korean brands have let us down. Actually, we should focus some attention as well on the people of Korea, who, for them, this is like their signature brand. These are their main beauty and skincare brands. And so they're actually going to be the ones that are most impacted by this. So again, I think when we share, you know, thoughts and feelings, it can almost come as an attack, but it's not meant like that. And we should actually be also thinking, this just doesn't impact us in the West. Actually, the biggest impact will have been felt by the people of Korea and some of the surrounding countries, where these are the go-to brands. And could, this could have been a systemic issue for many, many years. So we should kind of bear that in mind. All that said, let's jump straight on into it. I just want to start by saying what my position is on Korean sunscreens going forward. I decided after a couple of recent um, instances where just time and time again, we've seen these Korean sunscreen brands not live up to the expectations that the brand has delivered. I decided to take a pause on Korean chemical sunscreens. I'm going to differentiate between the chemical and hybrid sunscreens, which are the ones that create uh, use chemical filters and the purely mineral sunscreens. The reason why I'm going to continue to use um, the mineral sunscreen from Korea, particularly where the percentages of the um, filters have been disclosed by the brand, is because I think it's a lot less complex and you can kind of use the percentage filters as a guide to what SPF to give you that confidence that that product is living up to expectations. That's much more difficult when you're talking about chemical filters, which are much more impacted by the formulation and also the blend of filters which are used. So that's just a quick distinction, but I'm going to be taking a pause on the use of Korean chemical sunscreens. I think the final straw for me was to we had obviously issues surrounding the Crave Beat Shield, which we discussed earlier in the week. But since then, we've also had the revelation that COSRX, which is one of my absolute favorite Korean skincare brands, their Australian division um, and distributor said, realistically, they don't believe that the um, aloe SPF gel that they um, are promoting does actually live up to the SPF of 50 plus claimed by COSRX. And they expect it to be somewhere in the mid 30s. Again, I'm not saying a mid 30s SPF is necessarily a bad thing, but again, it's just another example of it not living up to the claims that are put on the bottle. Having done a little bit more research into this and seeing some statements from industry insiders over in Korea over the past couple of days, the reason I've decided to just pause the use of them in my skincare routine is a couple of reasons. And let me break them down. First of all, I think this is actually a very widespread issue now. When the first issue happened with Purito, I think we all thought, 
okay, you know what? No country, territory, or region is ever going to be immune from this. When it comes to um, manufacturing, when it comes to brands in the world economy, there's always going to be the odd bad egg. Or the odd one that slips through. Maybe it's a dodgy manufacturer. Maybe it's a dodgy brand. Maybe it's a little bit overzealous marketing. You expect that. It doesn't make it right, but you can almost expect that to happen. That, I think, is what happened when we talked about some of the Claire's issues and the Purito issues. It was down to one specific manufacturer that clearly wasn't doing the right thing by its brands or its consumers. Beyond that, it's then spiraled. And by my reckoning, there are seven different manufacturers which have been found to be producing um, SPFs which don't live up to the claims that they said it does. They then pass them over to Korean testing authorities and labs to then test the product, which again, always confirm what's been happening at the lab and saying, yep, yeah, these are absolutely fine, ready to go. Under independent third party and third country testing, the majority of these have been shown to be below that. So not only is there an issue with the manufacturing, there's also an issue with the testing and the laboratory testing after that process. And finally, this gets handed over to the regulator who's supposed to oversee all of this and make sure that us as consumers are protected. And they've allowed all this to happen and haven't checked it, haven't validated it, haven't questioned it. And so it's that almost three tier approach to the failure. This is what I think sets it apart from some of the other um, scandals which have gone on in recent memory, because whilst there are, uh, are always going to be those that slip under the net and I don't think any regulatory environment can protect people 100%. I think that would be ideal but I think a little bit too much to ask. This seems to be an industry-wide issue where brand after brand, manufacturer after manufacturer and lab after lab seem to be creating a misleading impression of their SPF which ultimately is impacting us the consumer. I think you know the authority rests with the regulators who should be overseeing all of this and making sure that the consumer is protected and again there's been a failure at that level. And this is why I've kind of lost faith in the whole system of um, Korean sunscreen manufacturing and uh, testing. And then, of course, regulation. I'm sure that things will be going on behind the scenes and they'll be the regulators in particular will be working on how to fix this. And I look forward to the day when this happens and then regaining the trust in the whole thing. Like I say, this happened in Europe and America in recent history. Things changed and um, things were changed to make sure that it wouldn't happen again or to minimize the risk of it happening again. And that, again, regains our trust as consumers. Until that happens with the Korean um, industry, I just don't feel like it's something I want to place my trust in. When it comes to sunscreen, I don't think there is any more important step in our skincare routine. It's what protects us against aging, but also, and more importantly, against cancers and UV damage. And so I think you have to have full faith and confidence in the products that you use. I do want to take a bit of a positive from this. Whilst I don't want this video to be purely negative, I wanted this to just be answering some of the questions that you guys have. Because time after time, you've seen these products disappear mysteriously for online. And this leads a lot of people to wonder whether that specific product has then been caught up in this whole situation. A lot of you guys have asked about um, individual brands and products coming out of Korea. And I, I can't give you the answers to all of those because, you know, there is a limited testing done. And the testing which has been done has not been positive. And so this is kind of my way of protecting myself as a consumer against this. I think until the system-wide issues are sorted in Korea, I don't want to be investing my money in products which I don't think are going to give me the right protection. And one of the things that people have often called out is the filters which are used, which are often newer generation filters different UV filters in a lot of these um, Korean sunscreens. Are they actually the problem? Are they actually what's bad? This often comes back from the fact that these aren't approved in for use in America by the FDA. I always say to people, the filters aren't the issue. Other scientific studies, these filters have done exactly that. They have filtered out the UV light to protect our skin. The problem is the quantity of um, the filters which are used. If they're not used in the right amount, they're not going to be giving the protection which is advertised on the product. And that's where the problem lies, not with the filters themselves. So I definitely don't think we should stop innovating and that we should stop using newer generation UV filters. I just think they should be used in the right quantities and formulated correctly to deliver the right benefits. Finally, I get reached out quite a lot to about people frustrated with the whole sunscreen saga and saying, actually, I might just give up on sunscreen entirely because really, what is the point if we don't know what we're actually using? I understand that frustration, but I just reiterate the point. There is no more important part of your skincare routine than your SPF, your sun protection, and that you need to make sure you're using it every single day to get the maximum benefit. Applying enough, reapplying frequently to match the environment that you're in, and just following the guidelines on the product to make sure that you're protecting your skin. I actually want to leave the 
whole thing on a positive because whilst we're talking about Korean sunscreens and the ongoing systemic issues in that system, there are plenty of sunscreens out there which have passed verification, independent third party verification, and will deliver you the guaranteed protection that the company is suggesting. I put this all together in a recent video. I'll leave a link to um, that up there. So check that out if you're still struggling to find the right sunscreen for you because within that we've got a blend of minerals, there's some hybrid ones, there's some chemical sunscreens, there's one for every skin tone, type and budget. So I don't think people should despair and think sunscreens are just a write-off. This isn't something we should be using anymore absolutely the wrong approach and whilst this has dented confidence in sunscreen and I hope we can win that back I do want to reiterate there is no more important thing than using a sunscreen which you can believe in that you have faith is delivering yeah, the right protection for you and matches your skin type your tone and the environment that you live so do check that video out I will also give a really quick mention to the fact that without applying a sunscreen properly you're not going to be getting the SPF anyway it doesn't matter what's claimed on the bottle you need to apply it properly we all had a bit of a laugh at um, Gwyneth Paltrow and her recent um, use of sunscreen as a highlight, just the bare touch of the product. Obviously, that isn't the way to apply your sunscreen. And I covered in a video kind of how to do it properly to get the right protection, which I'll leave a link to up there. So check that out if you found your right match in terms of sunscreen, but you're still wondering how to apply it correctly. All there in that video. Guys, I hope this just worked as a little bit of a lowdown on some recent developments, my thoughts and feelings on Korean um, sunscreens and how I'm gonna approach it going forward. I do just wanna caveat again, I don't think this should be seen as a slight on the Korean skincare industry as a whole. I think a lot of the brands which I mentioned in the video or in previous videos have been trying to do the right thing and they've been let down by their manufacturers, by the testing labs and by the regulators as much as we have as consumers. I'm not excusing the fact they should have done more due diligence. I absolutely think that should have happened. I just think sometimes it's easy to blame the brand when actually there's a whole host of things that should go behind it and we should see that in context. I'd love to know your thoughts and feelings so leave me a comment below with um, your thoughts on this whole situation or any of your favourite products um, and while you're down there give this video a like if you enjoyed the content. Wherever you are in the world guys stay safe Stay well and wear your sunscreen. Take care. Bye.